Hey guys, this is Method Andrews. Imagine you have a square sandwich, and you and your friend wants to share this sandwich equally between yourselves. You both, however, are both stubborn mathematicians. You both will only eat the sandwiches if it is in triangular pieces. How would you do this? You could do it like this. Down the diagonal, and now both you and your friend are happy. Now imagine you have three friends want to share the sandwich. How do you split it now? Well, we could split it like this. Both diagonals. Now all four of you are happy. Is it possible to continue splitting the sandwich into triangular pieces with six friends? How about eight? Take a minute to try it and comment answer down below. Here's one solution for six friends. And actually, this same process can be expanded to include any even number of friends. Now this is all well and good, but what if three friends wants to split the sandwich? Is it possible? This question was first posed by mathematician Fred Richmond in American Mathematical Monthly in 1965 and was finally proved by Paul Monsky in 1970. The question Monsky was able to solve is if a square is dissected into triangles of equal areas, can the numbers of triangles be odd? To answer this question, we must first look at two ingredients, Sperner's lemma and two eddy valuation. First, to demonstrate Sperner's lemma, we must triangulate the square, then color the vertices one of three different colors, red, green, or blue. No matter how we color the vertices, the number of red, green edges on the perimeter and the number of red, green, blue triangles are either both even or both odd. Imagine the square, and for every red-green edge, place a pebble on either side of the edge. Each red-green edge on the perimeter has only one pebble next to it. Every other edge has either zero or two pebbles. Because every other edge adds an even number to the total number of pebbles, this keeps the parity of the number of pebbles the same. This means that the number of red-green perimeter edges and the total number of pebbles have parity. Now, look at the red-green-blue triangles. Inside each is one pebble. Every other triangle has either zero or two pebbles. The same logic for counting the pebbles applies here. The number of red-green-blue triangles and the number of total pebbles are also both even or both odd. From this, we see that the number of pebbles for the red-green perimeter edges and the number of pebbles for the red-green-blue triangles have the same parity. This means that no matter how you triangulate or color the vertices, the number of perimeter red-green edges and the number of red-green-blue triangles are either both even or both odd. This is Berner's lip. Now, to describe the two-edic valuation, a valuation is just a weight of representing how big a number is, like absolute value. For two-edit valuation, we determine how many powers of two are represented in a number. This formula describes how we determine the two-edit valuation. For example, take a look at the number two. Two has one power of two in it, so then we see that n is equal to one, this means that the 2 edit valuation of 2 is equal to 1 over 2 power of 1, which is 1 over 2. How about the 2 edit valuation of 4? 4 has 2 powers of 2 in it, so n is equal to 2. This means that the 2 edit valuation of 2 is equal to 1 over 2 power of 2, which is 1 over 4. Take a moment to figure out what the 2 edit value of 8 is. Now, let's go the other way. For example, for 1 over 2, it has negative 1 power of 2 in it. This means that the 2 edit valuation of 1 over 2 is 2, so it's 2. By the same process, 2 edit of 1 over 4 is 4. Now, take a moment to figure out 2 edit of 1 over 8. 
It is important to note that any odd number or any rational number that contains only odd numbers has two etic of one. Now that we established Sperner's lemma and two etic valuation, we can finally prove if it is possible to split a square into an odd number of equal area triangles. Here we go. First, triangulate the square into n number of equal area triangles. Let's assume that the square is on xy plane. Then, color each vertex on the edge on the square with either red, green, or blue. According to these formulas, if we take a good look at this vertex, we see that 2 etic valuation of x is 1 and 2 etic valuation of y is also 1. So this satisfied the inequalities here. We can conclude that this vertex is green. We continue doing this process for every other vertex to create a picture that looks like this. Note that the bottom edge only contains the red and green vertices. The left edge only contains red or blue vertices and the right and top edges only contains green or blue vertices. Looking at the picture, we can see that there are an odd number of red-green edges on the perimeter. This is actually true for any triangulation. Now, because we know that there are an odd number of red-green edges on the perimeter, we know that there is at least one red-green-blue triangles. Let us now give the area of this triangle the value of r. Because all triangles in this square are of equal area, then the area for all red, green, blue triangle is 1 over n, meaning that r is equal to 1 over n. There is some more complexity here that we don't have time to get into, but if r is the area of the red, green, blue triangle, then the, the 2 etic of r is greater than or equal to 2. This means that 2 etic valuation of 1 over n is greater than or equal to 2. Now we know the answer to our problem because the 2 etic valuation of 1 over n is greater than or equal to 2, then we know that n must be even. So it is impossible to cut a square into an odd number of equal area triangles. So unfortunately, one of your friends is going to be very hungry. Thanks for watching our video. Please like and subscribe to the Math at Andrews YouTube channel for more content. Also, please share this video with your friends. Please, it's a part of our grade. Thank you and keep being curious about math.